welcome all of you for this session. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, aligning design decisions with business goals in enterprise application. Uh, what do I want to say here is that, you know, uh, as a designer, we tend to think from user perspective only. We, we, we are the user advocates and we think from the user perspective only. In, in the thinking of user perspective, we often, you know, miss about what business thinks and what business is looking for. So since I'm in a typical B2B company, business is everything, uh, I wanted to provide a perspective of how a designer can sink in with, with the business goals and, you know, accordingly he can start deriving and designing and, you know, whatever he does can be in sync with the design decisions. Uh, so before we begin, I, I wanted to have a very small session of trivia questions. Let's start with this. What is the full, full form of AOP? So this is annual operating plan, right? Next is KPI. This is simple. A key performance indicators, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is key performance indicator. Awesome. Bingo. What is CAGR? This you must be knowing. Annual growth rate something mm -hmm. came yes. up in some uh, one project, but I can't remember the actual full form. Yeah. You are you are almost right. It's compounded. Uh, compounded annual, annual. Uh, yeah. annual growth rate. Yeah. What is CAC? Customer acquisition cost. Awesome. Yes, this is right. Customer acquisition cost. What is ARR? This is simple. Annual revenue. Annual average revenue rate. That will be ABR. Is it annual rate of return or something? Uh, no. Annual recurring annual revenue. Yes. Yeah. Annual recurring revenue. Like annually your revenue is recurring. Whatever revenue is, is recurring annually is your ARR. And you all you always want to increase ARR in your company. Now in Power BI, what, what does BI stand for? Business intelligence. Yeah, this is business intelligence. What is OKR? Objective key responsibilities. What is CLV? So this is customer lifetime value. A customer who stays with you for a time. What is what what is that value? So so I, why why I did this activity? I just wanted to let you know is that how there are business lingos which gets used in every conversation if you get into touch with business people and they will be talking in these lingos only they will be saying that hey we need to increase this we, we need to increase our arr we need to better our roi so they, they will be using this this language until the time we are not familiar with their lingo and their kpis we will not be able to understand what they are trying to say and we will we will be coming back from the from the meeting scratching our head like what, what did happen i mean do you did you understand what what he said something i mean this this happens are you guys you know uh, what i said you guys agree with this or not yes 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 totally 100% gopal yeah yeah so now the the question is ki why aligning design decisions with business goals is important is you know we we all drive all of this we try to maximize our roi we we always try to improve user satisfaction and engagement yeah so uh, 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 it encourages cross functional collaboration facilitates scalability enhances design uh, decision making strengths brand identity drives in, uh, innovation and what not so your your design or your customer can only be happy when the business is happy. If your business is not making money, your customer will never get that coupons which they can avail. So in order to, or they, they, are, they are burning money, but they cannot burn their funding forever. One day profitability will come into the picture and their VCs will say that, hey, we want profitability to come into the picture. We cannot keep on burning money. So you have to make your business profitable. In order to make your business profitable, you need to understand what business requires. How, how are you going to 
make your business profitable and once your business is profitable you will be able to provide all those features all those discounts all those coupons to your uh, customers so that they become eventually happy then how do you do it so in order to do this we have to understand what what all what all business kpis are and and what do they talk about so i'll be taking you through few of the business kpis you might be knowing this but but i just wanted to cover this so the, the general business kpis could be one revenue growth which measures the increase in a company's sales over a specific period of time like how the what is the revenue growth qoq quarter on quarter mom month on month right net profit margin which indicates the percentage of revenue remaining after all operating expenses so th there is something called pat as well profit after tax um which is quite close to net profit margin but but the difference is net net profit margin is in ratio and pat is in revenue now operating cash flow so in order to operate your business how much cash you have if you don't have cash you will never be able to operate your your business uh, well and if your cash flow is negative it means you are burning your money if your cash flow is positive it means you are making money so in order to sell something let's say you have a uh, uh, something uh, of rupees 100 and you are selling it at rupees 110 it means you are making 10 rupees profit but if you minus all the expenses to that so uh, you have logistic cost you have office cost you you are you are providing salary to your people eventually when you calculate you will come down to mine uh, come down to 90 rupees so eventually you are making 10 rupees of loss per product which looks like you are making 10 rupees of profit so which makes your cash flow negative it means your your business is going down so you have to make your business cash flow positive now return on investment so whatever you are investing so whatever feature you are going to build should have some return on investment if if it does not provide any roi usually that feature or that requirement gets deprioritized so you only prioritize those features which can yield more and more profit to the company any any doubt in these four points so in order to understand all of these kpis i have Uh, uh created a dummy case study so that we understand how how does all of these can be plugged right and can be understood so let's say there, there is an executive summary for eco box uh subscription so which is a curated selection of eco friendly home goods which is a new product line segment catered to you know uh, uh, supply the demand of sustainable products uh in the uh you know in the market so let's say you have a a platform already available and you are you know uh, starting with a new um uh, offering which is eco box which provides uh eco friendly products right and the the overall agenda is to start this new venture uh, uh within a product is to improve your financial performance and your return on investment so um Uh, let uh, then you will proceed with what is the current situation and opportunity for this special market segment which we talked about so uh, so current situation and opportunity is if we did market analysis and we try to understand what is happening in the market where research indicates that the market could grow by 15% annually in this category so if we go for this category there may be 15% year on year growth right and if we look at competitive uh, uh, landscape several e-commerce players are already there but but no one is providing that much valuable service so there there is definitely a gap which presents opportunity for differentiation and market leadership so we can definitely tap that market provide some unique value propositions there so that we can start competing in that competitive landscape so now how does all fit in the ux so this is all about uh uh business now how does all this fit into into ux so so uh, we all are aware aware about uh, how does a, a design functions but let me walk you through this again 
the for the first and foremost thing would be your user research and persona development your objective is to understand the targeted audience deeply and what are their needs and wants action what all actions could be done in order to achieve user research and persona development would be you can conduct qualitative research which could which can be done by interviews and focus group discussion then qualitative research you can do some surveys uh, you can also uh, download some white papers if available and you can study and uh, get some data from there then uh, you 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 have to create your user persona which represents your key customer segments second would be you try to understand the customer journey map you try to identify the uh, pain points opportunities and key moments that matters across the customer life cycle how does a customer is going to use this like right? and you create customer journey map around that okay then since it's it's an e-commerce sort of thing then a mobile first approach would be always better because the adoption is really high on um, on mobile so we at moglix itself our uh, uh, 90% of the users they land on our mobile application uh, pwn app not on uh, desktop hence uh, kishore we last time we discussed and i said that that's why we haven't redesigned our uh, home page that much because you know we don't see that roi because getting into that engineering investment for a longer time and not generating any um, roi from there so i'll uh, i have a few question and amazing uh, presentation gopal i would say while you were talking i was having some ideas uh, like you know we have cx ux and uh, you know we could we could have a term called bx also business experience yes that's very important <laughs> that's very important yeah and uh, so because uh, i think Uh, and and it's very wonderful to see because many times we get so much caught in design and we don't really focus on the business aspects of it but business is the one which is pre and after adopting that design right so and they are the ones who are so uh so i had uh, you know one one or two questions so you talk about a lot of kpis and uh, and metrics is that could be measured from business front what tools do you think uh something something that can be used uh, during we kind of engage in the design so do you think google analytics will do the job or there are like you know we use like microsoft clarity but that's more on the screen part of it like understanding more on that and second question was what parameters do you think like many times when we create design let's say it was moglex and before we started we let's say we got the project and after once we complete the design what are the impact areas that you think as a design agency that we should capture and think so that we actually prove that this was the roi the overall design and the investment went by yeah so to answer your first question um google analytics adobe analytics they are good tools to measure your deeper you know user interaction they provide fairly good amount of data and from there you can you know get more and more insight and rightly said clarity only provides your uh, top level user interaction it only provides that uh, the combination of uh, uh, clarity and ga is deadly so you can use that you can have both things incorporated in your website you can identify patterns via clarity and then you can go and dig deeper via uh google analytics so that will really really help you i uh, had one sure. so now uh, i want to know so we've been working in like a design agency i think uh, majority of us have started our careers also in a design agency we've not yet moved to product but uh, we wanted to know that uh, i i would want to know is that uh, now as a ux designer i will have certain set of responsibilities to make good you know user flows and all so where does the transition sort of happen like i'm assuming that if i want to get into more business related inputs and get more business insights somewhere or the other i'm transitioning to a product manager kind of a role and also like uh, you mentioned about logistics so that becomes a whole different department that i need to and then there are a lot of stakeholders that come into play so how do we manage that 
and like where we can see that we are we are able to get insights from all these departments there will be logistics there will be finance how can we get insights from all of them together without really overwhelming ourselves and then we can't do our work on it yeah so we all have our own responsibilities uh the overall process i talked about is primarily for for the senior you know uh, designers who are having fairly good uh, amount of experience and and uh, since you said that this looks like a, pro- uh, a product management job so sooner or later i think this is my hunch is that product and design will merge one day because you know there's so many common aspect which we do they also can create wireframe you also can create wireframe they also can go and research conduct primary research you also do primary research so if you see and check the the you know overall uh, tasks which you do and they do there are so many things which are common so sooner or later maybe down the line 5 years 10 years uh, there will be a single role which is you know um, whatever i don't know you you will call it product designer or a uh, or a product manager i don't know but it's going to merge one day hence you should start thinking from product manager point of view and if this if this not if this does not merge even you should start thinking as a product because till the time you don't understand product till the time you don't understand understand business you will never be able to create that meaningful product this is the sheer truth you will be designing something which you like 